waters of Mexico's Baja Peninsula are incredibly fertile with seafood that's not only prized by those that live nearby, but by connoisseurs all over the world. And you could imagine that such enthusiasm for Baja seafood could lead to overfishing, which is why some have turned to aquaculture, a practice that in many cases is considerably more sustainable. Along with a couple of local chefs, Benito Molina and Alain Henchi, I headed out into that sweet spot where the Bay of Ensenada meets the Pacific Ocean. I knew that these guys would have a really deep understanding of local aquaculture. I mean, they cook with these products every day. Juan Carlos La Puente was generous enough to take us out to see his oyster and mussel production, where we found some divers bringing up crates of oysters to haul onto the boats. So explain to me what the diver is doing. Okay, the, the dark diver went down. Yes. And, and he unrolled the, the he, baskets. He unties the baskets. He there. made a signal to the, uh -huh. the, the person in the boat. Yes. And with the crane, we get it out. And then they'll bring him up. What are they pulling up there? Is that oysters? Uh, oysters. That's oysters. We put like uh, 50 doses per basket. 50 dozen per, per basket. basket. Wow, yeah. a lot of oysters. How long does yeah. it take to grow them out? To One, their year. Full size? One year. One year. One year. Okay, now I gotta, I gotta have one. So you open, open it up. You got a screwdriver here, right? Yeah. So you're doing it with a knife, and he's doing it with a screwdriver, which is what I would probably do in a place like this. Okay. It's that pure, clean sea flavor. That is brilliant. We broke into that crate of oysters. Man, I'd never tasted an oyster that fresh. As we headed off to another part of Juan Carlos's aquaculture operation, where he grows mussels. But instead of being cultivated in crates, mussels attach themselves to a rope that's protected by this huge long net that they call a sock. And that's where they grow to maturity. So explain to me, now, the, the, he's pulled up those muscles and they're on some sort of a line there, right? Yeah, there, there's a diver on, under the water. A diver that's down there and he's yeah. doing, he's unhooking them or something? Unhooking them. And we have uh, 300 uh, socks over the, this Three, line. I see, 300 and, of them over here. Yeah, and it, it produced like six tons per line. Six tons per line in a year. That's a lot of, that's a lot of muscles. Yeah. That's a lot of muscles. I think my companion sensed how eager I was to get into the kitchen with our fresh harvested crustaceans. So we headed back to the mainland and we unloaded our bounty. There's this restaurant right on the docks called Muelle Tres, and the chefs there regularly have Juan Carlos's oysters and mussels on the menu. So they weren't that surprised, I think, to see us hauling our catch right through the front door. They began by cleaning the oysters and popping open their shells, then arranging them on a tray for us to enjoy with some vinegary sauce to spoon on. The mussels were treated with an equally simple, delicious preparation. They were de-bearded and rinsed. Then the chef put them in a pot and added diced tomatoes, onions, cilantro-infused olive oil, and a good douse of beer. It only takes muscles a couple of minutes at a steady, strong simmer for them to open up and release their delicious liquid into the steaming broth. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I don't know where to start. Salud. Salud. Primero. Antes que todo. Salud. Can I pass you an oyster? I think they're fresh. I think they're fresh. <laughs> okay, so we have salt. We have limon. Chile. That's delicious. Gracias. They're so full. I mean, they, they taste fatty almost, you know? They're just such good muscles. And there is also a beautiful story, you know? The, the darker color ones uh -huh. are the females, and the lighter color ones are the males. Is that a story or is that the truth? No, it's the truth. That's the truth. So what's your favorite way to cook muscles? My favorite I with uh, coconut milk. Chili. Mm. That sounds fabulous. This is a great idea. Well, I love mussels anyway, so now I can go home with all kinds. I gotta get home and start cooking. <laughs> now, 
my chef friend in Ensenada, Benito Molina, he makes this mussel dish with his local mussel.
Chef Benito Molina offered to step us through some of the signature seafood preparations at his restaurant, Manzanilla. I love this guy. I mean, he's an imaginative, knowledgeable, and accomplished cook whose food speaks delicious volumes about seafood in and around Ensenada. At his restaurant, Benito was offering three different varieties of oysters. He picked two of them and prepared each one differently. The first type of oyster he put into his beautiful wood-burning oven to smoke over the smoldering coals. The sauce that he made for those oysters was a rich tarragon and butter sauce. I know that sounds incredibly French, but he infused it with this very Mexican blend of six different powdered dried chilies. For the kumiai oysters that we had harvested earlier in the morning, he cut up bits of pickled pig's feet to add to a dressing that he had prepared with cucumbers and sherry vinegar. And the raw oysters were served with a nice spoonful of that pig's feet dressing. Next, Benito showed us a fantastic preparation for the local aquacultured abalone he's so passionate about. After separating the abalone from the shell and cleaning it, he started a sauce with garlic and olive oil. Local olive oil. To that, he added some epazote and some chopped smoked tomatoes. He browned the abalone in a heavy skillet over high heat. That was a little surprising to me. I thought abalone would require low heat. Then he added a little Mexican crema to finish the sauce. After a squirt of white wine, he left the abalone to steam in the pan while he and his sous chef worked on the presentation. I sat down with Benito's wife, Solange, who is a fount of knowledge when it comes to local wines. I had asked her to pair a wine with each one of Benito's dishes. Now tell me about this wine. Where is it from? What are the grapes? Who made it? This is a wine that it's made in France by a Mexican winemaker. You know Hugo? I know Hugo. Um, Hugo da Costa. But I it's, wanted to surprise you. You really <laughs> did surprise me in that. But you know, the food here in Baja is such a mix of different influences from different places. These oysters, smoked oysters, and then it's got butter on it with French tarragon, which certainly will go there, and all of these different chilies powdered in there. So it's a mix. It's a mix. <laughs> okay, a, I've got to try, try one of these because, yeah, you, would love when, it. you know me, I, I'm always salivating as I think about these beautiful flavors. I'm loving that. I know. <laughs> you have surprised <laughs> me beyond belief here. I'm ready for the next dish. Me too. Okay. <laughs> The first wine had a lot of golden color to it. This is a much lighter colored mm -hmm. wine. What is this one? This is wine is from Porvenir, de la Escuelita. I think it's Sauvignon Blanc. It tastes Plain. like Sauvignon, yeah. It, it has that flavor that I associate with Baja wines that is... Saltiness, yeah, it has a saltiness. saltiness. And that is something that I think is characteristic, especially of the white wines that you find from the Valle de Guadalupe. Now, when I think about that mineral and salty, I think about oysters. Yes. So I can't imagine what the flavor is going to be like exactly. You're you're in that place where you've got the similar textures that sort of a little bit fatty pig's foot mm -hmm. is like the fattiness of the oyster. And that chewiness, no? It's that, that's, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> the only word I can come up with is brilliant. I know, okay? I know. That is it's a good brilliant. recipe. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's a good recipe. That's, that's my kind of wine. It's actually the Sinfandel from Silvestre, and the other one is Petit Verdot. Easy to drink. It's easy to drink, but it's rich and, and with the smoked and tomato. Well, that's you will see. You, you will know, see. that's exactly what I was thinking: is that it would go so beautifully mm -hmm. with the smoked tomato part of this. Now. Abalone is not something that everybody knows about. No. And they haven't tasted it. They have. They don't know the rich flavor of it and everything. I find its texture to be one of the most fabulous parts of, of eating abalone. 
because it has a kind of lovely Chewiness. chewiness, but not, well, it's almost crispness. Now, with the wine, we have a happy match too. I know. I, you, you know the wines, you know the wines of the area, you know Benito's food. It, this dish, that wine, says so much about Ensenada. It says so much about love of craft, and whether the craft is cooking, knowing just how to prepare that abalone, or how to make the beautiful wine, the whole thing goes together so remarkably well. I thank know. Thank you very much. No, I'm gonna thanks have for another, coming. I'm going to have another bite. Eat it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
until it sort of looks slushy. The next step is to cut up our defrosted shrimp. This has already been peeled and deveined, and I'm gonna cut it into about half inch pieces. Now the shrimp go into a bowl, and I'm going to stir in our green mixture. And we're going to allow this to marinate, to pickle, to ceviche for about a half an hour in the refrigerator. Now for spiciness in this dish, we're going to combine a very spicy habanero, or a little bit of it, and a serrano chili. I'm going to chop those finely. Now, little chives. And lastly, an avocado. Take the little button end out of it, cut around the avocado, twist the two sides apart like that. Remove the pit, scoop the ripe avocado flesh out of the skin and then cut it into small dice. The ceviche has been marinating for half an hour now. So I'm gonna scoop in the spicy and herbal elements and now the avocado. And then stir that all around. You don't even have to be at the sea to enjoy great seafood.